Hi everyone, today we're going to do a quick Fusion 360 tutorial showing you how to make a linear bearing block. If you saw my previous video where I made my own for a screen print squeegee arm upgrade video, you kind of get the idea of what I'm looking to make. This was inspired by the mostly printed CNC bearing blocks. Uh, I discovered these many years ago when I was researching my uh, CNC. I really like the design of it. It's essentially just some bearings that are placed around a, a tube and then you basically make yourself a bearing block. It's a really cool design. So I'm gonna show you how I design mine in Fusion 360. And if you're looking for a fast, low cost way to turn your Fusion 360 designs into real parts, then check out the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. They offer 3D printing, CNC machining, and pretty much every other manufacturing process that a maker or creator will ever need to turn their ideas into reality. Check out PCB's Way services in the link in the description below. So don't be alarmed if you don't if you don't see the exact same uh, interface. These are just the things that I use very often, so I've pinned them to the top. And if you find yourself using uh, tools and features in Fusion 360, you can pretty much pin everything to the toolbar. So you can see, you click on these three dot uh, menu here, and then you can just click on pin to toolbar. And it'll be pinned up here so you can easily access it. So the first thing you need to figure out is the diameter of the pole or the rod that the bearing block is going to be going onto. For the squeegee arm upgrade, I'm using a 20 millimeter metal rod. So we'll draw that just as a reference model, first of all. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new component and we will call this steel rod. And then we will click on create a new sketch and we'll draw it by clicking on one of these planes here. So we'll select this plane. We will choose the circle and you can press the C. If you hover over any of these um, tools here, it will give you a little tool tip. And if it does have a keyboard command, it will show you in brackets. So you can see there C. So I can press C on the keyboard. I'll click in the middle and we can draw it out and you can try to get 20 mil, but it's just easier just to type in 20 mil on your keyboard, hit enter and there we go. So now we will extrude this. So we'll pull it out to actually create the, the rod. So you can press E on your keyboard to bring up the extrude command, or you can right click inside of it and you can click on press, pull or extrude. Doesn't really matter. Click on extrude. And as this is just a reference model, it doesn't really matter how long it is, but let's just make it 100 mil. So we've got something to, to go off here. Okay, there we go. So now let's create a new component. Let's come back up to the main component. We'll click on new component and then we will click on the name and we'll just call it bearing block. The way that we're gonna do this is I am not gonna draw all of the bearing uh, and all of the nuts and bolts. I'm gonna use a really cool feature in Fusion 360 and that is being able to import models from Mac Mastercar. So what we'll do is we'll click on insert and then we'll click on insert Mac Master car component. And this brings up this little Mac Master Mar interface. Now you need to sign up for an account for this. It is free. You just need to enter an email address. It's very easy. And then you can pretty much import thousands and thousands of different models from Mac Master car. It will save you a lot of time. So what you want to do is you want to find the bearings that you're going to use. Now I've gone on to eBay and I've just looked at the most cheapest, easy to find bearings that I can get hold of. Uh, 6,000 series bearings are what I'm buying on eBay. So make sure that you know what bearing you are going to be using because it will affect the overall dimensions of your bearing block. And you don't want to pick your bearings here first in MacMaster car because depending on what country you're in, you might find it actually difficult to source these. So go to your local supplier of wherever you buy it from, find the bearing that you that you can easily get hold of and that is cheap, and then use that model. 6,000 bearings are incredibly common, so you'll probably be using something around that. So you can just type in 6,000, and you can type in ball bearings. It doesn't really matter what type they are. You can get sealed uh, ones with rubber sealing, uh, ones with open housing. It doesn't really matter. All we really care about is just the dimensions. So just make sure that the you know shaft diameter, 
the uh, diameter of the outside as well is appropriate for the one that you're buying. I know that the 6,000 bearings I'm buying do have a shaft diameter of 10 millimeter because I'm going to be using M10 bolts. So this one is fine. If you click onto the one that you want, and then you see that you've got product detail, you've actually got the CAD model here. If you use the drop down, you choose 3D step and click on download, and it will now import the model into Fusion 360. So there we go. So you can see that at the moment, here is the model. You can see that it's got all of the parts of the bearing. It's all drawn out. It's all accurate. So it saves a lot of time, but it's currently placed in not a very good position. This is not really where I want it. So let's go ahead and move it. So you can see that we've got these little handles here. We can rotate things. So let's rotate this 90 degrees. And then if we just swing around here, so I'm doing this by holding shift and pushing in the mouse wheel button. And we can choose the face that we want to look at as well. So I want to move this up. So we click on this arrow here and we will move it up here. So you can see that this is probably a little bit too much uh, clearance here. Now, as I'm going to be drilling this bearing block uh, with a drill press, it's positions are probably not going to be super accurate. So I want to give myself a little bit of room for error. Obviously, if you place all of these bearings exactly on this 20 mil rod, then you have got no room for error because if you drill the holes in the wrong place, it's going to affect the, the diameter of the placement of these bearings and you just won't get it on. I think from here to here, this is probably a bit too much of a big gap. So that is, it looks like it's right on there. So that's a bit too much. So this is 23. So I think I can probably give myself 23.3. Uh, let's go to 23.2 actually. That looks about right. I can probably get the holes drilled and give myself that much space. So we have this bearing placed where we want it now. What we're going to do is we're going to add a nut either side of this bearing just to hold it in place. And then once we've got one bearing and nut all placed together, we'll just create a circular pattern, duplicate it two times, and then that's pretty much it. So what we need to do now is we need to insert a another component because we don't want to waste time having to draw an M10 nut. So if we just type in M10 nut, anyone will do. As long as the uh, dimensions are right, you buy an M10 nut, it's pretty much going to be this dimension here. 3D step, we'll click on download. And there we go. So now it is placed. We need it next to this bearing, either side. And we need it obviously uh, in line with this inner hole here. So we can move it again. So we can use the arrows to, we'll just drag it up here and then we we'll use this arrow and we just drag it out. So it's kind of like approximately in place. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the point to point to move this exactly where we need it to. So if we click on point to point, and now we will select the point that we want to first of all move. And I've only just discovered this myself. As you can see, when I hover over the different faces, it, it shows me different points. Now I want to select, you see that middle point there? If I hover over this face, can you see that cross? There you go. Problem is I can't select it because every single time I move my mouse away from this face, it disappears. But if you hold the control key once you've selected the face, you can then move your mouse and it won't disappear. So I can select this middle point here. Excellent. And I want it to move it to exactly this point. So you can see that Fusion 360 kind of knows what I want to do. And make sure that you are selecting this outer face here. You can hold control and you can click it there. There we go. It snaps to position and it's perfectly in line here. You can click on capture position as well because you want to capture the movement that you've made. And now all we need to do is we need to just mirror this nut on the other side of this bearing. So to do that, you can click on create, you can click on mirror. We want to choose the component. So we want to select this nut here. We want to mirror this entire nut. We'll click on the mirror plane. Now we can choose the uh, plane. We'll choose this one because we've drawn in the, in the middle. So it will mirror it 
exactly where we need it to be. And then we'll click on OK. So now we've got one full bearing in its place. We've got the nuts either side. And now I can just create a circular pattern of these three components to finish the bearing. Let's go to create, we'll go to pattern and we'll click on circular pattern and we want to choose components and we'll select all three components. We'll choose the axis and we'll choose the, the rod as the axis. And there we go. So you can change how many you want here, two, three, four, you can make it as many as you want. And it saves you a lot of time instead of having to draw all of these uh, nine components out individually. You can see that using mirror and uh, patterns and importing things from Mac Mastercard really does save a lot of time. Click on OK. And now we want to actually draw the, the bearing block. So what we're going to do is we will now create a sketch and we will create it on the face of this rod here because this is, as you can see, it's centered in between all these models. So I can sketch out the bearing block and then I can just extrude it symmetrically both sides and we'll create the bearing block. So let's choose this plane here. And now what I want to do is I want a reference uh, for drawing this bearing block. So I'm going to use the project command and this will project current geometry onto the uh, onto the sketch that I'm drawing on at the moment. So I want the geometry of the nuts here because obviously I need to create enough of a gap to actually fit this bearing and these nuts into. So we can just go ahead and select all of these. And let's click on OK. And now what I want to do is I want to give myself a little bit of a gap because obviously I need to squeeze these three parts in between a bit of metal. So let's just give an offset of, I think one millimeter will be enough. So let's just do minus one here. Let's offset this one by one. We'll offset this one by one. And then we'll offset this one by one. Okay, excellent. So now I've got uh, some reference geometry that I can now start to kind of piece together. So we'll bring up the uh, the line tool and we'll just kind of continue drawing this. So if we just move the points around, you can see that we can easily kind of just like connect the dots. And honestly, I'm just, you know, just kind of like freestyling this and just drawing it how I need. And then we'll just extend this out. We'll just extend it out. Let's just call it 15 millimeters. Again, I'm just, you know, doing this just freestyle. Okay, excellent. And we can now just continue to draw this Okay, so there we go. So we've got the rough shape of the bearing block now. And what I can do is I can right click here and we can click on press pull, choose the selection. And now we want to extrude it uh, symmetrically. We click on this. And now if we pull it out, now this is something you need to think about. You need to think about the, the thickness of the material. I was using 20 mil aluminium plate. So if I extrude it out by 10 each side, that's going to be 20 mil in thickness. And that looks about right. So I'm going to get an M10 bolt through this. So I'll have a 10 mil hole drilled here. I've got five mil either side. You know, that's, that's plenty enough for it to be rigid enough. Let's click on OK. And then there we go. So now what we want to do is we want to model the the holes that we need to make. Now, this isn't that important because actually, if you look at the video, uh, the CNC part of this was only machining this shape. I then took it over to the drill press to actually drill the holes. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just kind of model in these uh, these holes that would be drilled. So let's let's first of all put in the hole that is going to go through this 
first bearing here. So we'll select create a new sketch and we want to start the hole here. Now what we want to do is we want to use the project command again. So if you press P on the keyboard and we want to project this bearing here. It doesn't really matter what part you project. We just simply need to get that center point. So any part here, it will give us a center point. Now I've projected here and as you can see, if we click OK. I've now got a center point. So from there, I can press C on the keyboard to bring up the circle command. And from that center point, we can draw out a 10 millimeter hole. So now what we can do is we can press E on the keyboard to bring up the extrude command. We will choose this 10 millimeter circle that we've just drawn. And then we will select this face here for it to cut through. Now, because there's currently a bug in Fusion 360, it seems, um, if you just choose the face, it doesn't actually seem to cut all the way through. So you have to just drag it out a little bit more. And then there we go. So you can see that that has gone all the way through. And now we want to uh, model in the holes that we're going to be drilling at an angle. And if you look at the video, I actually made a 3D printed jig to uh, help me with that. And again, that's really easy to do. All we need to do is create a sketch. Uh, we will choose the face that we're going to be drilling onto. So if we choose this, for instance, and we'll just do the exact same thing. So we will project the bearing geometry so we get the center point. So we just click there. We can press OK. And now what we can do is we, we can actually hide these. You can see that we've got these uh, three parts here, which are these three. And you can just click on the little eye icon just to turn its visibility off so I can actually see what I'm doing now. So we've got that center point and we'll again, draw a circle, 10 millimeters, because we're gonna be using M10. And now we'll extrude it. Now you wanna be careful here because you obviously don't want it to kind of crash into this. So maybe let's just bring it down. I think 13 mil looks like it will be enough. So that looks about right and we can click on OK. And if you want to check to make sure that you are actually not kind of, you know, crashing into other um, features of this model, you can use the section analysis, which is in the inspect menu here. So if we choose section analysis, and it will essentially just give you like a cut through of the model. So we can choose the face that we want to make the section analysis off and we can just drag it back here. And if we just bring it back 10 millimeters, because we know that we made this part 20 mil thick, you can now see that I'm not crashing into anything. And I can actually go ahead and actually edit this. So you can see if I choose this extrude command, and now the section analysis will, will stay like this. So I can actually see what I'm doing. I can see, you know, I could bring it, if we just bring the view here, I could bring it right up to here. You know, I can really see how far I could push this. So I think 16, and that might be a little bit too much there. Let's make it 15. 15 looks like it's enough. Let's press OK. And if you want to remove this section analysis view, you can see that analysis has been added here. You can just toggle that on and off. So it's a really nice little feature. So that is it. As you can see, there is the bearing block, and it will just kind of move along this rod. It works really well, as you see from the uh, from the video, and I really do like this design. This is a really gr great way to make a very um, smooth bearing block. And when you consider the cost of actual bearing blocks, especially when you start getting into larger diameters, they become very, very expensive. And this is a really quick and easy way to make um, a really nice bearing block. Hopefully I haven't glossed over any of the features of Fusion 360. I tried to make this as beginner friendly as possible. If you've got any questions, um, or if you'd like any other Fusion 360 tutorials, let me know. I'm a beginner myself, but I've been using it for about a few years now, and I really do love Fusion 360, especially the fact that it is free for personal use, which is amazing. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, uh, but that is it for today. I will catch you later.